we had wave discoveries. Thomas, a guy by the name of Thomas Young conducted an interesting experiment called the two-slit experiment. I'm going to show you what that is because it totally shattered the scientific world at the time and still does to anyone that hasn't really studied this, the two-slit experiment, which demonstrates the wave, that it's really a wave-like thing. A guy by the name of Fresnel, uh, uh, he, he, his experiments are more complete, and he concluded also that, the, uh, that light was, uh, behaved like waves. The Fresnel lens is, uh, was designed for lighthouses. It, it, he designed lenses that were, uh, uh, that light would come out parallel, if you will, in effect. And uh, this is all about the time of the Napoleonic Wars and so forth. So, um, uh, Young, by the way, is an interesting guy for lots of reasons. He has, he's, he made contribu contributions to science and capillary actions, uh, he, uh, elasticity. He's the, also the one that was monumental in deciphering the Rosetta Stone and hieroglyphics. The people of that period were incredibly broad gauge. That's why they used the term Renaissance man, I guess. Now, see, Newton was knighted in 1705, and he died in 19, 1727, excuse me, 1705, and died in 1727. So it was still too early to dethrone him. I mean, he had his views, and people would be very reluctant to examine evidence in view of those views. We got to be careful ourselves, because most of what we've been taught in school is wrong. And, and, and how many of you would take a physics class with 1950 textbooks? I wouldn't. You know, I mean, I did. But I mean, you stop and think what's happened in 50 years. Almost everything that was in those textbooks has been disproven. If you take current textbooks, they're still full of known lies and deceit. And that's one of the great tragedies in our education system. But let me talk a little bit about this two-slit experiment to give you an example. On the left, we have, say, a partition with a slit in it, a little light. A light can come through that slit. And that light can then hit an image, a, a piece of a, a, a wall or a piece of film or what have you. And if you plot the intensity of that light, obviously in the middle is the brightest and it tapers off. It follows a, uh, something approximating a Gaussian dis distribution. That's all pretty straightforward, no problem. Well, if you, have, if you put between that slit and your, your plane a plane with two slits in it, well, you'd expect the light that hits it the, the, let's just cover up the bottom one and look at the top one only. It will act like a point uh, source of light, and it will. You'll expect, of course, it, the distribution of energy to be just like the previous one, right? If you cover that one up and do it the other side, you'd get another one. You would expect that if you open both slits, you would get the sum of those two slits, right? That would seem reasonable. If you open both slits, though. You don't get the sum of those. You get something very different. You get the interference between the two. Uh, mathematically, you don't get just h squared plus h squared, uh, h squared plus j squared. If you use h and j for the two slits, um, you get h plus j squared, which spreads out to give you h squared plus j squared plus a whole other term. The, and it's the most powerful term in the, in the. It's the middle one. It's the. It's the interference. So what this slit means is, see, this makes no sense the more you think about it. If light is a stream of particles and you, it, it's going through one of these slits, it appears to know whether the other slit's open or not because it, it'll behave differently. Follow me? See, it, 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 it's obvious that the individual particles are not operating individually. They're operating organically as a group. And that creates a real mystery because on the one hand, light can be demonstrated to be a stream of particles. It also behaves like waves, both. And that created all kinds of problems. The 19th century, of course, reversed. A guy by the name of Foucault, the guy that did famous for the pendulum, he established, he made a discovery that shook the world at the time, that the speed of light was less in water than in air. Well, that's no surprise for wave theory people, but it makes no sense for the particle people. Corp corpuscular theory. Because if it slows down, what speeds it up again? Are they pushing from the back? I mean, you, know, you, you try to deal with that mathematically, you have real problems. So that, that created all kinds of stir. Then this incredible human being, James Clark Maxwell, comes along. And he's discovered many, many things, but he's primarily responsible for our whole awareness of what we call today the electromagnetic spectrum. And he discovered, among other things, that the light is an electromagnetic wave. So it not only acts like a wave, it acts like a wave in some very profound ways. And a, 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 a contemporary of that time, Heinrich Hertz, established electromagnetic transmission and reception um, uh, as a result of all that. So, 
So now we get to the 20th century, there's a whole reversal. And then there's this weird experience in 1900. A guy by the name of Max Planck was wrestling with what they call the black body problem. I won't get into all that. But he was trying to get a mathematical uh, description of what was being observed. And out of desperation, having tried everything else, he misapplied a couple of Boltzmann's equations and he applied them incorrectly. And they worked. They really shouldn't have. But he, in doing so, he discovered what that, the implications of the, the experience, and I won't get into all the math here, is that it wouldn't integrate because light comes in little bundles. So it's not, it's, it's not continuous. It's, in, it's, it's, a, it's a, in quantum. And so this revealed, the mathematics revealed a non-continuity that was operative here. It was a few years later that Einstein published the explanation of what Planck had encountered. And it leads to revival, again, not only the corpuscular theory of light, it opens the door to the field that we call today quantum physics. The fact that the subatomic particles behave in the strangest ways. And uh, it's so strange that Boltzmann, who understood the real implications of what they discovered, couldn't handle it. He committed suicide. It so shattered their understanding of reality. And, and uh, we'll talk about the quantum physics next time in more detail because there'll be some reasons for it. But the main idea is that energy is not contiguous, uh, uh, continuous. It comes in little tiny bundles. That was the discovery. What they've discovered since is that length, mass, energy, time itself is quantized. It's in, 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 in digits. The analogy is like a piano. You can hit a key, you can hit the key next to it, but you can't get a sound between them. You with me? It's, it's really digital in a sense. Do you follow what I'm saying? It's quantized. Well, so is light. It's quantized. So is everything quantized. And we discover today, you and I are in what could properly be called a digital simulation. Not analog. Not continuous. It's very strange. <laughs>